beyond those free throws. In and out. substitution as Derek Smith and Scott Panola come out of the game and into the game is looks like number five for Zionsville and then number I'm not sure who else checked in. Sorry for all the technical difficulties here early in this game. We had a late setup tonight and situation came up here at Zionsville where we had to kind of configure everything relatively quickly so hopefully we got it all worked out. All the kinks worked out and we'll be able to progress through this game a little more smoothly from here on. Certainly, certainly. As Zionsville checks in, a couple new players. Number five, looks like that's Braden Hall. He's a sophomore as well. And also number 32 came into the game, Alex Sibilla. A moving screen there called on number 21 for Zionsville. That's Aaron Powell. That'll hit his first foul as he just now checked in, as Alex alluded to. 2.28 left in the first quarter. Zionsville leads Western Boone. As Western Boone still having trouble to get it past the timeline. And ball was deflected and actually went out of bounds as the Weibo player caught the ball. A nice defensive play there by Braden Hall for Zionsville. And the Zionsville defenders really challenging Weibo to get it across the timeline tonight. And as Andrew. Braden Hall is a very undersized point guard, he's only five foot nine and is a sophomore, 150 pounds, but he seems to be very skilled. And uh, oh, I thought it was going to be an over the back call, but they actually call the foul on Western Boone, and the Weibo fans and coach are not happy as Western Boone's coach is doing some work on the sideline with the referee. And there will be two shots here for Zionsville. Yeah, it looks like Zach, Gar Zach Martin got him on the arm as Alex Sibilla hits his first free throw. And we'll see as we're waiting for the second shot to come. And the free throw is being taken by number 32 for Zionsville. Alex Sibilla, as I guess you mentioned, it's kind of hard to hear each other in here. It certainly is, yeah. As we have another substitution, looks like number 22 for Western Boone comes into the game. That's Austin Burtner. Weebo takes it down the court and a reckless move into the lane. They're going to call it a foul on Zionsville. I think that could have been a makeup call from the other end as uh, number five for Weebo, the point guard C.J. McCann, uh, kind of drove through the lane head down pretty reckless, but... He'll get to earn a trip to the line and two free throws here. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Braden Hall just got a little bit beat coming down the court, and the, the point guard, number five for Western Boone, C.J. McMahon, was able to drive into the lane and got some contact as he went up. So a very nice job getting past that high-pressure defense by Zionsville up to the, up the front court. The first free throw was in and out and missed by McCann. 
Second free throw is up, and it dances around the rim and scores. So Weibo trails Zionsville here with just under two minutes left in the quarter. And both teams, as we've talked about, are shooting the ball very, very well. They're getting open looks and creating shots for themselves, keep moving around on this, this high-motion offenses by both teams, and they're able to, to get a lot of baskets. Open look here. And in and out, but the rebound by Sibylla and a nice put back there. Sibylla, a couple nice minutes as he's checked in the game recently. Yeah, and he very easily could have gotten an and one foul right there. It looks like he was shoved as he went up for the layup, but very good control to be able to put that in there. Tough as... shot taken from the corner for Western Boone. Rebound comes to Andrew Dockich as he takes it across the timeline and the ball working around the perimeter here for Zionsville. Dockich with it now. He's going to take a screen and kicks it to the corner. A good defensive stand here so far for Western Boone. And they will earn a turnover as they force a steal. McCann has the ball now, taking it towards Zionsville's end of the court. A pull-up jumper for McCann falls. So Western Boone trails by two now, under a minute left to go here in the first quarter at Zionsville. And this point guard for Western Boone, number five, C.J. McMahon, is very impressive. He's quick off the dribble and is able to get himself into an open shot right near the foul line every time he beats the point guard of Zionsville pretty much. So he's doing a very good job. And, you know, the nice thing about high school basketball is there is no shot clock. So, you know, you can hold the ball as long as you want to get a good shot. No I think that's what Zionsville is going to do here. 20 seconds now left in the first quarter. And Dalton Judd gets the ball. Back to Braden Hall, 10 seconds left to go. And a nice crossover, but is that gonna be a five second it call sure on, the, on Braden Hall? Yeah, five second call and Zionsville takes a lot of time off the clock, but turns it over and Western Boone will get the last shot here in the first quarter. Yeah, and Coach Music is not happy about that. He felt like Braden Hall was making an active move to get to the basket under five seconds. So, but nevertheless, the refs made that call and a good defensive job by Western Boone when all that time ran off. McCann up the court, fires up a long shot when he really didn't need to. And the first quarter ends and Zionsville is winning this game 17 to 15. That last shot of the quarter, Alex McCann he pulled it from about five or six feet behind the three-point line with three seconds left. Still had plenty of time to get a better shot, and I'm sure he'd like to have that one back. Yeah, he sure would. And, uh, you know, after the first quarter, very impressed by Derek Smith. He had six points, four rebounds, and an assist. So very nice job in one quarter of play as he only played about six minutes of that, eight minutes that were played. But, you know, both teams very impressive to start out I thought out with. Western Boone shot the ball very well. Very, very well. And, you know, they weren't a lot of open shots. A lot of them were just kind of off the dribble and were able to pull up jumpers. So, you know, it's kind of typical Indiana basketball, just good shooters and and uh, a lot of ball movement and constant movement from the, the offensive players. So very good job, and we'll see what they're going to do the rest of this game. I'm, in I'm interested to see the rotation tonight for Western Boone as they only have eight guys on varsity. Zionsville themselves might be a little tired after the overtime win last night. So I think uh, the fourth quarter we'll really get to see uh, who will have the fresher legs of these teams. Is it going to be Zionsville, who had the long game last night, or Weibo, who's a little short of bench players? Absolutely, and I think the key to this game is, is who's going to control the glass tonight. Obviously, Zionsville is a little bit oversized compared to this Western Boone team, but you know, as long as Western Boone can block out and control the, the glass, they can have a good chance here against this Zionsville team. And a bad pass from McCann. Weibo will turn the ball over on their opening possession of the second quarter. Dalton Judd with the ball. As he is, works it around the perimeter. Derek Smith's jostling for position down low, and he's going to have to Come out and set a screen here as Michael Solomon looking for room. Some nifty dribbling. And Panola nearly turns it over. He gets the ball back. 
And there will be a foul call on Western Boone. It'll be on the floor as Panola was fighting to get the loose ball there. He was fouled. So it was a good job to maintain control of the basketball by Scott Panola, even when he was going up and kind of forced a foul from Western Boone. And there's uh, three team fouls versus three team fouls from both sides. So, we'll, you know, basically in high school basketball, if a team can get into the bonus early in the second quarter, it's, it's definitely a benefit for them. And a missed shot taken by Smits, but he gets the rebound and blows the layup. Loose ball is almost grabbed by Michael Solman. Nice hustle, but he wasn't able to bring it in before going out of bounds. So, Zionsville turns the ball over on their opening possession this quarter as well. And I'm sure Derek Smith wants that one back. It's pretty much a wide open layup once he got the ball off the uh, deflection. But nevertheless, good job by Western Boone to hang in there and get the ball back. McCann with the ball, kicks it out. Weebo looking for a shot right now, swinging it around the perimeter. And it goes back to McCann. He throws it out of bounds, but I think it was might have been deflected. No, they're going to say Zionsville ball. So three turnovers here to start the second quarter, Alex. Certainly, and I think C.J. McMahon once, uh, was looking for a, some contact right there. He did get bumped a little bit, but... Pretty, pretty good defense right there. This, this Braden Hall kid, I'm very impressed with him. He's he's very quick and controls the ball and plays solid defense. And deep to Smits, and he will get the basket and the foul. And that seems to be a pretty nice game plan if you're Zionsville. Weebo, their tallest defender on their team is 6'6". And that is JT Whitaker, and I believe he's out of the ball game right now. That might be him, actually. Yeah, I think number 10 is... is I think they're going to have to have him in every minute Smith is in because other than him, their next tallest guy is listed at 6'1". And when you have almost a foot height advantage... Yeah, I, I will say, though, when, when Zach Martin was in there, that's uh, number 23 for Western Boone, he was doing a very good job of, of using his body to keep Derek Smith out of the lane. And, and, you know, it's a little bit different from from JT Whitaker, who's kind of taller and skinnier, but, you know, Derek Smith is having a very good game so far and is really padding the stats on. Zionsville rebounds the miss from Western Boone, and Solman has it at the top of the key. Gives it to Smiths. Smiths backs down, looks for a turnaround jumper and a good-looking shot, but Weebo gets the rebound and turns it right back over. And an open shot for Solman. He misses. Rebound Scott Panola. Zionsville doing great here with the offensive rebounds. Getting lots of second chance opportunities. Smith's backing down. Finds the point guard in the lane. Nice shot fake there for Derek Smith. And he puts it up. So Very nice. Very a lot nice going shot. on there for Zionsville. But great ball movement. And they get a basket and take a seven-point lead. Western Boone has yet to score here in the second quarter. And Western Boone takes time out. And, and the biggest thing there right there is Zionsville is, it was very, very aggressive and, and had a lot of offensive rebounds right there. Anytime you get second-chance points, it works as a benefit for your offense. And, you know, intelligently, Braden, uh, Braden Hall took the ball and dribbled it out and was able to control the ball and, and reset for the offense. And as we alluded to earlier, not having a shot clock in high school basketball is – Makes it a little bit easier to set your offense up, and there's not really a sense of urgency ever. And the timeout was taken by Western Boone, and they'll have the ball down seven points. And they need a score to uh, break the momentum here of Zionsville as they've really dominated the offensive glass. Weebo, they, we, we mentioned earlier they shot the ball well, but, you know, they, they've kind of gotten in a – and a routine of one and done. So if they don't make that shot, they're not getting hitting the offensive glass. And Zionsville's gotten lots of second chance opportunities. Absolutely, you know. And if you're Western Boone, this game is still pretty tight. It's only a seven point game, and you know they're doing a lot of things well. Obviously, coming into this game, Zionsville probably is a little bit better of a team. You know, they both played two games, I believe, and I think Western Boone is two and two and zero oh as well as Zionsville, but. You know, we'll see as very nice defensive play by Dalton Judd. Dalton Judd plays very good defense. Huh. 
We are checking the score up here, the SEC championship game. Alex and I, big Notre Dame fans, looking forward to seeing who they'll play in the national title. Smits ties up a Weibo defender with a loose ball. Jump ball will go to Zionsville. So, yeah, I think they'll give a rebound to Derek Smits there, but very good job, man. They're really fighting down low and, and banging around on the glass. It's, it's been a very, very good battle so far tonight. And a shot from the corner is made, and that's Andrew Dockich. That was a real good shot. He had a defender in his face and was able to just pretty much shoot that up there, and nothing but net. Very good shot. Andrew Dockich, as I mentioned earlier, scored 11 points last night in that Zionsville overtime win at Westfield. A nice shot there. An answer from Western Boone is number 21, Riggs Baxter, makes a basket. And that's Weebo's first basket of the second quarter. A nice strong move there by Smits, and he'll draw the foul on the floor as he lowered his shoulder and drew some contact there. Nice play. Yeah, that call could have gone both ways, I think, because he did lower his shoulder, but the defender was moving, and a very good job by Derek Smits. He's getting himself to the line and giving himself opportunity to score points. I think he has 13 points already tonight and at least four or five rebounds, so a very good job so far. Smits makes his first free throw. I think that'll put him in double figures or close to it. Yeah, I think he's got 14 points now. And the second free throw bounces in for Derek Smits, the son of Rick Smits. Rick Smits sure had some good days there for the Indiana Pacers. The dunking Dutchman. Uh-huh, him and Reggie Miller took him to the uh, NBA Finals where they eventually lost to Kobe and Shaq and they're in their prime, shot up and rims out for Riggs Baxter. And Zionsville rebounds. Andrew Dockich loses the ball and is able to get it out. There's a scrum now. Zionsville comes away with it. Oh, and a fantastic pass by Michael Solman. And the pass, a no-look pass there by Michael Solman to Dalton Judd. That was for the Zionsville smooth. basket. That was, that was a, a very smooth. nice, nice pass. And a good One for the highlight reel. And a good sense of awareness by Michael Solomon as Derek Smith just rejects the ball out of bounds with authority. <laughs> My goodness. A very nice block there, and that'll stop the clock. Zionsville will get a couple fresh bodies in there. As we're going to see Aaron Powell, number 21, and also Alex Sibilla. And Braden Hall all check in the ball game. Smiths will get a rest. Certainly something you look forward to in, in future years for Zionsville is Derek Smiths is only a sophomore and could certainly grow a few more inches, you know, only being 15, 16 years old. Basket made there for Western Boone. That's LV Bowden. Zionsville leads by 10 still as Braden Hall has the ball in the corner. A nice oh. A great screen and roll, but a travel there. And that seems to be Zionsville's game. They like to do a lot of high screen and rolls, and they, it works very well, especially when you have big bodies against a smaller team like Western Boone. And, you know, having Derek Smith and Alex Sibilla, who, you know, 6'4 and 6'10, and even Josh Dunlop, who hasn't got any playing time yet, but he's only a sophomore at 6'7, 240. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of a lineup and, and if they can perfect that screen and roll. Weebo struggling to take care of the ball and get any sort of a look. McCann finds his shot on the perimeter and puts it in. C.J. McCann has been the bright spot for Western Boone so far this game. And the lead is back down to single digits. <laughs> As Zionsville hits a three-pointer right there, I didn't see who that was. I... We're busy working on some technical stuff, but nice defensive play by Braden Hall right there to step in there and steal the ball. The ball's out of bounds. Possession remains with Western Boone. And Weebo's going to take the ball out from midcourt. 
Passes it back behind the timeline to Riggs Baxter. Guarded by Andrew Dockage. Michael Solman waits at the scores table to get back into the game. As McMahon for Western Boone draws a foul. Foul will be on the floor. Zionsville not yet in the bonus. So Weibo will uh, take the ball out here from the baseline. And I think it's very important for Western Boone to score here. It's, it's, it's an 11-point game right here, and if they can... Uh, if they can really get a score here and make a little make a little run before halftime, they can put themselves back in this game. And it seems like a, as soon as Zionsville starters go out, there's a little bit of a scoring lag for Zionsville. But an air ball is put up by Zionsville. The rebound came down to number 32, Alex Sabilla. Alex Sabilla is a good rebounder. He's been great so far tonight. He sure is. He's six four, so he's pretty much just as tall, if not taller, than everyone on Western Boone's team. But he does a very good job of using his body to screen off and and blocks out these defenders. A minute and a half to go here in the first half. Zionsville leads by eleven. Uh, near turnover, but Michael Solman got it back. And Powell tried to follow it up, and he was fouled. So he'll earn a trip to the free throw line as the clock stops. Yeah, it's a very good job. Good offensive rebound, and, and good job by Michael Solomon to, to get that ball back. And the first free throw is, was missed, and the second was missed as well, but the shooter, Powell, tracks it down and saves it along the baseline. Zionsville resets as Michael Salman has the ball. Very nice job scrapping and getting an offensive rebound off the missed free throw, and you know that's something as a coach you want to see from your guys is hustling on those rebounds off of the uh, the free throws that are missed. That's it's. Something that doesn't happen a lot are rebounds off a of free throw, but nevertheless, a very good hustle play, and Zions was able to maintain possession. Andrew Dockich had the ball knocked away, knocked out of his hands along the baseline, and he will inbound for Zionsville. And there's going to be a foul on the floor, a push on Western Boone to the dislike of the crowd as we're sitting right next to the Western Boone fan section. And that foul will send Zionsville to the free throw line. And I believe they, they may be in the double bonus right now. Yep, sure. Are. They've got eight fouls against them. And once you get to seven, it's one and one. And then once you get to eight, I believe it's it's uh, two shots no matter what. So we'll see if Zionsville can add to their lead. It's 32-21 to 21 with a minute and five left to go in the first half. And, you know, so far it's been a very, very strong game by both teams. Western Boone shot the ball well. Not as well in the second quarter as they did in the first quarter as Zionsville player hits his first free throw. And looks like it was one on one and one. So I guess they get to nine before it's – or maybe even ten. It might be seven and then ten. It could be. We're, we're going to have to learn the uh, ins and outs of high school basketball on the fly here. This is our first season of doing Indiana High School Hoops. We cover football – we covered Zionsville football for the last two years and uh, decided to take the plunge into basketball. So a little more fast pace, but I'm sure we'll get adjusted as the season moves along and hopefully be uh, delivering a great broadcast in due time. A minute left here in the half. Zionsville leads by 13. As number 15, yet another sophomore for Zionsville, Jake Mann checks into the ball game, 6'2", 175. I'm surprised they've got four sophomores on the varsity team, and all of them are over six foot, except for Braden Hall. So, yeah, pretty big kids. The basket is made by McMahon for Western Boone. And we'll see how long Zionsville decides to hold for the last shot. Sibylla has the ball in the corner, throws it cross court to Salman, a dangerous pass, but caught cleanly. Salman puts up a perimeter jumper. And he's off the mark, and Western Boone is now running. An open three from the corner for Weibo, airballed long, and Zionsville has numbers here as Solman passes it in a blocking foul on Western Boone. 
And the Western Boone crowd once again. Uh, we have fathers up here cursing at the referees. It's getting real dicey up in this Western <laughs> Boone section. It is, yeah. It's Nevertheless, Michael Solomon will go to the line for another one and one opportunity here. And, you know, Western Boone's hanging tough in there. They're only down 11. And as soon as Zionsville, nice offensive rebound right there. Free throw is missed and rebounded by Zionsville, so they'll hold for the last shot. A high screen by Sibylla. He gets the ball back, and it'll go out of bounds. So that's the second time in the first two quarters. Zionsville had an opportunity at the last shot and turned it over with about five seconds remaining. So Western Boone will get the last shot of the half, and I believe it'll be McMahon. Two seconds left, and he has the ball stolen, and that'll be the end of the half as Zionsville goes into halftime leading 34-23. to and we'll take a break here at halftime. We'll leave the cameras rolling. And we'll be back to bring you second half action here as Zionsville leads this game by 11.
We're back here for some second half action from Zionsville as the host Eagles lead the Western Boone Stars by a score of 34 to 23. And Weebo will get the ball to start the second half, trailing by 11 points. And a nice, nice high layup off the top of the glass. And that was Riggs Baxter, number 21. And he really didn't have a choice but to throw that one up high off the glass because Derek Smith was right there to swat that one away. And Andrew Dockich has the ball in the corner, finds a little open room, misses the shot. Rebound is brought down by Western Boone. So Western Boone is able to cut it down to single digits as the, the lead for Zions was only nine points right now. And Weebo moving the ball around, taking their time, trying to get a good shot. Ball comes to McMahon on the wing. And looking for a shot in the corner here as our views cut off a little bit along the baseline. Western Boone taking a lot of time off the clock here, Alex. Yeah, they sure do. They like to dribble and be patient and wait till they find a good shot. It's very tough shot is taken, but a rebound and a nice break for Riggs Baxter on that one as he took a real tough layup but got his own rebound and was able to put it back up. Yeah, very nice job right there. It was a tough layup, as you said, and he missed it, was able to fight for his own offensive rebound. And, and so Western Boone has cut it down to seven points now. Andrew Dockich has the ball for Zionsville. A wide open shot as he finds a man on the wing. Three nice pointers shot. made. That's Dalton Judd. A very nice stroke. And Andrew Dockich found him wide open on the wing there. He sure does. It seems like Zionsville is continuing to stick with that high screen and roll offense they like to run. And I think they're going to have success doing that pretty much most of the year. Western Boone moving the ball. And now McMahon will take it. McMahon double teamed up top and kicks it over to Riggs Baxter. Riggs nearly travels. Might have got away with a walk there. And a very tough shot taken by Western Boone and missed. Lee, LV Bowden on the miss there. And Dockich will line up for a three. He misses. Rebound, Derek Smith. Smith's... Desperately trying to hang on to the ball, and finally he's fouled under the basket. Yeah, and he did a good job. He crashed in there and was able to keep his arms up high and, and pull down that rebound, and then was fouled on the putback. So he'll go to the line once again. So very dominant performance night, right tonight by Derek Smith as he's able to control himself in the lane and, and come down with the basketball more than not. First free throw was made by Smith's. Smith's, uh, I think he's made all of his free throws so far tonight. He makes another one, and he's he's got to be the. We don't have stats right in front of us. Got to be the leading scorer here for Zionsville thus far. Certainly, I think he's got actually 16 points tonight, and I know he's got at least six or seven rebounds. So he's approaching a double double pretty quickly as three Western point Boone. shot taken and bounces over the basket. So Zionsville will retain possession. Shot was missed by J.T. Whitaker. Andrew Dockich with the ball now, and he'll take a screen from Smith, kicks it out. Solman now at the top of the key, a nice pass. Solman has distributed the basketball very well tonight. And he's able to do that because he's such a good shooter. You know, they really had to come out on him, and he's able to beat them off the dribble, and then when they get this help side over to him, he's able to find the man open. And, you know, that's Zionsville's offense. You know, pump fake and go to the basket and find the open man to drive down. So it's been a very good job by Zionsville. Uh -huh. Smith misses a hook shot. That hook shot just looks all too familiar. Sure does. <laughs> I mean, minus the air ball, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, if you can imagine uh, Smith's hook shot, I mean, Derek Smith kind of puts it exactly like his dad did. Yeah, I'm excited for him to see the uh, the runner across the free throw line uh, hook shot. Oh, and a dunk a tip there by Scott Panola is missed. And I think he pretty easily could have done it. He's lost the handle on the ball. I didn't see that coming once <laughs> at all. Very nice athletic move by Scott Panola, who we watched throughout the football season. He was a very dominant linebacker and 
also fullback. But I did not know he had that kind of athleticism. Yeah, 30-second timeout here for Western Boone as they trail Zionsville by 14 with 426 left in the third quarter. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, Alex, we uh, we covered Scotty Panola for the last two football seasons, and he was a real pleasure to cover and had a chance, actually, to use that leaving ability uh, to convert a two-point conversion to beat Pike in the state playoffs, and they couldn't quite convert. Uh, Parker Dunchy went down, who he should be playing basketball tonight, but we understand Parker had to have surgery on his ankle. He was hurt in the last game of the football season, so... He's going to be out this basketball season just in time for baseball. Parker, a highly touted baseball player, so we wish him a speedy recovery. He was certainly a treat to uh, cover for the football team the last couple years. Absolutely, and it says here that he's a uh, two, uh, two-year two letter winner, so obviously he's being missed as he's been in the lineup a lot the last two years. And, and a three-pointer taken in the corner by Logan Wethington. He misses. And the rebound to Dockage. Solman now with the ball. Some nifty ball movement and then a nice pass. Smits with an open look. He airballs it from about 15 feet away. It's a good shot, though. He got an open look. That was look a clean shot. He's got to take it. Absolutely. Uh, it looks like Braden Hall was called for a foul right there as he reached in trying to slap the ball away. But that's uh looks like that's Zinesel's first foul of the second half with 335 left. Zinesel's at 41 to 27. The inbound pass is made to LV Bowden and the ball dribbles and hits about every part of the iron but doesn't fall. And the point guard as we mentioned earlier, Braden Hall, he's checked in the game and he's going to get an open 3 as we speak and nail it. So Zionsville takes their largest lead of the night at 17 points. And this Braden Hall, he's a phenomenal shooter. Uh, read a little bit about him as a sophomore. I think they're expecting big things from him. He's only 5'9". He's very small, but he's super quick and plays good defense and has a lot of athleticism, and he can shoot the ball. They're going to call a reach-in foul on the floor. Michael Solman. And Weebo will take the ball out under the basket. And now... Alex Sibilla will check in the game as Scott Panola checks out. And pa Aaron Powell will also check in the game for Zionsville in place of Derek Smits. Open three for Good Western shot. Boone is made. A very nice shot. Took his time, squared up, and put it away. Screen by Powell. Solman's going to answer with a three of his own and misses. But a nice rebound by Aaron Powell, but then he throws it away. And McMahon takes it down the court. A nice layup. And a quick five-point run here for Western Boone. And Zazel's got to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. As Andrew Dockich makes a very nice move to get to the hole and, and puts an easy layup in. Very nice job right there. Way to answer back. Zionsville's lead now 14 points, 46 to 32. LV Bowden has the ball for Western Boone and moves it over to Riggs back to Baxter. A quick shot now for Weeball or Weebo and an air ball rather. Michael Solman gets the rebound and brings it up court. Dockich with the ball in the corner. Works it around off a screen. Back to Aaron Powell on the roll. And the ball falls into the hands of Michael Solomon. There's going to be a reach-in foul now on Western Boone. That's L.V. Bowden. Yeah, and L.V. Bowden just got a little antsy and pushed the postman out a little bit and got called for that tacky foul. And Western Boone, for the first time in this second half, is now substituting a couple guys back in. Looks like uh, J.T. Whitaker and let's see who else got back in there. Looks like number three, Braxton Porter. And Sibilla will take it in for Zionsville. He blows a layup. And no call there as it could have gone either a block or a charge, but the referees let him play. 
And now they'll call a foul on Aaron Powell of Zionsville, and a good call as he slapped the arm of the Weibo offensive player. That was Austin Burtner, and he'll earn a trip to the line for two. That was a very good job by uh, Austin Burtner to get to the hole right there and create contact, did a little double pump, and uh, unfortunately the Zionsville defender got a little contact on him and wasn't able to cleanly block the ball. And Burtner's first free throw will rim out. Derek Smith checks back into the game for Aaron Powell. Second free throw is up, and it is good. Weibo now trails by 13, under two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Dockic with the ball on the wing, takes a screen, has nowhere to go, fires to Smits. And Smits, a nice find there as he finds Alex Sabilla, a cutter across the lane, a nice easy bucket. As Andrew Dockic picks up an arid foul right there, unnecessary, but nevertheless slows him down. But as you said, very nice find by Derek Smits on the other side. And you know, that's, that's the nice thing about being six foot ten is you're going to draw a lot of attention to yourself. And if you catch a defense snoozing, you can easily find a, a person cutting across the lane or even down towards the basket. So very good job right there. And, you know, and along with his offensive rebounding and his, his uh, ability to get to the basket, he's also a very good passer, which is it's very rare for a, a man who's six foot ten and only sophomore. And for the first time tonight, Jake Mann checks in for Zionsville. He's a sophomore as the shot is made by Western Boone. A nice shot there by number 22, Austin Burtner. Salman finds a nice cutter, and that's Sibilla again. I've been really impressed with Sibilla tonight off the bench. He's got very good control. He's athletic, and he's able to, to really find his way to the hole. He, watching him in warm-ups, he's got good control with the ball with his hands, and you know he, he shoots a very high percentage because he gets into the layup lane and, and does a very good job. Controlled his body real well there, drawing the contact and staying strong and putting it in, and he also converts the free throw, so... Zionsville now leads 51 to 35, under a minute left to go here in the third quarter from Zionsville. And we have a tie, a tie up here and a scuffle on the court. Number, number 23, Zach Martin for Weibo got tied up and tried to rip the ball away very aggressively and the referees will, were quick to break up both teams. And I saw Zach Martin getting a little scuffle with Derek Smith earlier too, kind of fighting down low, and he really uses his body to, to push him out of the lane. That's And, a, and nice one play. there for McMahon as he is fouled, and I believe by Powell, and he makes the layup. Or, or no, they call the foul on Braden Hall, rather. And it certainly seems that McMahon's got to be in double figures with points as he's been the most prolific point scorer for Western Boone tonight along with number 22, Austin Burtner. And the three-point play can be made as McMahon misses the free throw. 35 seconds left to go here. Jake Mann takes a screen and dishes to Michael Salman. And Braden Hall, I thought he dribbled it off his leg, but it's they're going to call the ball out on Western Boone, so Zionsville will take it out from the baseline. 24 seconds left to go here in the third. Yeah, that was. I thought he dribbled off his foot as well, but nevertheless, we're over here, and I think the Western Boone parents thought that too. Derek Smith's a nice move, and a very nice three-point play is... He had a nice spin move along the baseline, got fouled, and as he was falling down, threw the ball up and made the layup, so Literally he'll get a chance. Literally with that from the floor yeah. pretty much. That was a fantastic play and a very nice job. He's a strong kid for a sophomore. Very imp impressed tonight from Derek Smith on both ends of the floor, and he finally misses his first free throw. I believe he's about somewhere around six, six or seven 
Six for seven or seven for eight tonight. And Weebo careful not for a, not to avoid a backcourt violation, but they get the ball to the wing and make a three-pointer as the clock winds down. That was Braxton Porter, the 5'11 junior, made that three-pointer. So Zionsville leads 53-40 to heading into the fourth quarter. Alex, what do you kind of, uh, I guess, what do you, to be straightforward about it, what do you predict here in the fourth? Well, you know, it's all about how Zions is going to respond to that last play. I think that was a little bit of a momentum shift for, for Western Boone to get a wide open three when there's the clock's ticking down to end the for third quarter. But, you know, as we go here, Western Boone is not out of this game. They're only down 13 points. They can easily go on a five or seven point run and they're right back in the game. And, you know, for Zionsville, obviously the clock is your biggest uh, friend right now with only eight minutes left in the game. Take long possessions, make them really press on you and, and get open shots. And we're going to still await as both coaches are still talking to their teams. Yeah, I think it'll be, it's going to come down to the wire. I, now, the fouls don't reset each quarter. And Zionsville already has six fouls called on them. So Weibo, with the next foul, whether it's on the floor or in the sh or during the shot, they're going to be awarded with at least one free throw. Absolutely. And, you know, as I kind of expected, <clears throat> Zionsville's coming out with a mix of starters and, and uh, actually – Pretty much everyone's a starter except for I think Alex Sabilla is in there, but uh, Derek Smith is the only starter that's sitting out. But I'm I'm assuming he'll come back in and finish out the fourth quarter in about six or five minutes. Scott Panola has the ball, and three second call on Zionsville. That's on Sabilla. And that's not really a good way to start the uh, fourth quarter for Zions. Only 13 seconds came off the clock and the turnover. So we'll see what Western Boone can do here and see if they can make this a game. McMahon passes it off to Riggs-Baxter. And that'll be LV Bowden with a shot and an air ball long. Rebounded by Sibylla. Ball given to Dockage. And a very nice play. That was Dalton Judd on the baseline as he avoided a defender, kind of double pumped and ducked under him and was able to lay it in. High screen and McMahon gets the ball. He's going to look for a shot. Guarded tightly by Dalton Judd. Signs will play in great defense right now. Yeah, they sure are. They're playing very good defense and they're a tough shot taken from the corner. That's long, nearly an air ball. Rebounded again by Sibylla. And the ball will go to Dockage. Dockage lines up for a three, misses. Rebound by Scott Panola, but he's going to get called for uh, over the back there. I thought that was a dicey call right there. I thought kind of on the side of him. Yeah, and he didn't have great position, but at the same time, he didn't crawl over his back. He just kind of went up and grabbed the ball out from underneath him. But they're going to make that call, and that's going to put Looks like, I think, L.V. Bowden at the line for a one-and-one. One. So, as you alluded to, Zions will just need one foul on against them to, to take Western Boone to the line. So, that's... Well, and obviously, the, and that's big because you get shots, but also it stops the clock. Exactly. That's so the biggest thing. When you're down double digits, if you can get the clock stopped often and get free looks, but you got to make them. And L.V. Bowden misses his first free throw. Zions will go in the other way. Yeah, and this is the time, you know, if you're Coach Busick... Tell your players just work some clock. Don't don't get down there and run and force these these shots like that. And granted, there was a foul and they're going to go to line for two shots, but you only took ten seconds off the clock, and, and the clock's your best friend right now. Sabella there gets hammered underneath. Got fouled by two defenders for Western Boone, and he'll make his first free throw. And Dockage sits down. Dockage has played most of the game. He hasn't sat out much, but he's going to get a breather as uh, Braden Hall checks back in the ball game. So him and Solomon will be in the backcourt. And I like Alex Sabilla's stroke from the free throw line. He's got a very good tempo uh, shot, and made. he's actually made all of his free throws tonight. So he's a very good shooter. And as you alluded to, I, I'm very impressed by that kid. He's got good control of his body and, and plays a good post game. Yeah, and when you're talking about playing a guy like that, 
off of your bench. He's a guy, Alex Sabia, that would that would start for a lot of teams. And when you got him coming off the bench, it's pretty nice. Absolutely. You know, depth in high school basketball is something that Zinesel looks to have, and that's something that's good. You know, when your starters need to get a little rest, you know, you get fresh legs in there who can play just as skilled positions and, and a solid post game. And, you know, obviously having Braden Hall and um, Alex Sabilla and also, you know, Aaron Powell coming in, that's, that's definitely helpful, especially with Parker Dunchy not being in the game. Logan Wethington draw draw a uh, he got a shooting foul I believe yeah he did because he missed the first free throw and he's getting awarded a second I didn't I thought for sure that'd be on the floor but he got called in the act of shooting so he'll make one of two and the deficit is now 16 for the Western Boone Stars and they've certainly kind of let continuation linger a little bit in high school it used to be. You know, unless he was actually shooting, they weren't going to call that as a shooting foul. But, you know, now they kind of let some continuation happen as Michael Stallman gets a push and loses the ball. And that'll be on the floor, I assume. Yeah, that one's definitely on the floor. Uh, they're lining up for free throws. So. Well, they're saying one and one, so I think it's going to put Zionsville in the bonus. But Yeah, unless they, maybe they just haven't put the foul up on the board. I thought they had five. And now they are changing it to on the floor. So okay. So yeah, it's a good observation. Yeah, it's seven fouls for one and one, and then ten for double bonus. So. So they are going to call the foul on the floor. It was perfect timing as you were talking about the continuation rule. I would have been very surprised had they awarded him uh, free throws for that one, as it was clearly while the ball was still being dribbled on the floor. I mean, yes. Yeah, oh, a kick since... out here, Braden Hall. He had an open look and made the three from the corner. A nice pass by Dalton Judd as he got into the lane and drew some attention. A quick answer here, though, from Western Boone. Braxton Porter, he made the three at the end of the third. And that's kind of been Zionsville's Achilles heel tonight. You know, Obviously, they're controlling this game being up by 16 points, but they have not really been, been able to get back and, and make good transition baskets as Derek Smith is fouled on the floor, and so he's going to go to the line now for the actual one-and-one one as Western Boone just got into the bonus. And it dribbles in and falls for Smith, so Derek Smith continues his uh, impressive free throw shooting tonight. He's only missed one. Yeah, and he's certainly approaching 20 points tonight, I think. And he makes the second as well. You know, Western Moon's got to have a little bit of a sense of urgency here, you know, as they're trailing pretty largely in this game. McMahon, as a nice pull-up jumper, and he'll make it, and Weibo will call a timeout. 5.15 remaining in the game. Zionsville leads by 16, and they'll have the ball after the timeout. As we resume play here in the fourth quarter, Zionsville gets the ball to Derek Smits, and he just powers his way in and barely misses a layup as it rimmed out. 
And a wide open look there for Braxton Porter. He'll miss long, and the uh, ball will fall out of bounds. Zionsville will get possession. And so do you expect for Zionsville to put some uh, some backups in here in the last, like, four minutes with a 16-point lead? Yeah, it could be. I think we're going to see uh, maybe closer to two minutes. I mean, a few three-pointers in this game can get dicey, so I think they'll try to build on this lead and probably take some time. I think they want good, long, you know, 30-second possessions, try to take some time off the clock and – Probably get some much-needed rest after a full week in a basketball for this Eagles team. Oh, a nice pass to Smits and an easy layup underneath. He's got to have over 20 tonight. Certainly, and, and Michael Solomon continues to impress me with his vision and his passing. That was a beautiful entry pass off the screen and roll and a very good job by Derek Smith to seal the man out and easy layup. Three-pointer taken and missed by Western Boone. Solomon gets the rebound. He dribbles it past the timeline. Panola takes it, stops and pops, and it rims out, but the putback by Solman. Solman is a very active player on the court and a lot of fun to watch so far this game. Yeah, certainly, and he, it always seems like he's in the right spot, which is very it's important for a point guard. You know, it's, He's done a good job tonight, and I, I'm, I'm continuing to be impressed by him. And Panola will get the rebound, and he's pushed in the back by Bowden, so... Scott Panola will head to the free throw line. And this LV Bowden has, has had kind of a tough night having to battle with Scott Panola. We all know how strong he is watching him in football and, you know, hasn't been able oh, yeah. to score very much as Scotty Panola shut him down pretty well. And The most exciting thing Panola's uh, provided tonight was that, uh, that missed dunk attempt. That would have been nice. Probably would have brought the house down here at a pretty good crowd here in Zionsville. Yeah, not bad. The student section is pretty packed. And, and, and Weibo came out. They showed a lot of support for their team tonight. They've pretty much filled their uh, their allotted section here. Absolutely. As Zionsville continues to expand the lead to now 21 points, biggest lead of the night by either team. And, you know, with Zionsville's depth, you just kind of sense that there's maybe they're just a little bit of a better team than Western Boone all around. Western Boone, a very good shooting team. Can't take anything away from them with that and, and – you know, very impressed by C.J. McMahon, very good scorer and, and a senior leader for this team. But, you know, Zions will just too much depth and talent. And after the second free throw is made by Panola, he sits down and Aaron Powell checks in for him. And I think L.J. Ba or L.V. Bowden just fouled out of the game. Well, he had a tough time underneath, as I, I figured pretty much any uh, Weibo defender Wood down low, having to contain Smits and Panola and uh, Sabia, who came in and gave some good minutes. Zionsville, the front line of Zionsville, really has controlled this game for and the I, whole night. I guess I'm kind of confused on an offensive foul. Is that not still a bonus? Like, would you not shoot free throws if there was an offensive foul? I, I'm not exactly certain, to be honest with you. And Western Boone gets the steal. The oop is thrown, but Western Boone can't convert. The ball comes out of bounds. It's a pretty scary scene on the Weibo side of things as a Western Boone fan just stood up with his baby and is screaming lifelessly. Well, as long as he doesn't drop the baby. You yeah, know, I know. It was just kind of a scary sight to watch, honestly. <laughs> But uh, hopefully we get out of this game as Solomon steals it in a fast break now for the Eagles. Oh, a hard foul. Oh, my God. Michael Solomon was taken off. That'll be a flagrant, I assume. I hope he's okay. He hit his shoulder pretty hard on the way down as the training staff comes to see him. He gets up. This was getting chippy at the end, and we knew it was going to come to something like this. That was a very hard foul. I'm sure not sure was. how they're going to call that. And I think he's going to be all right. Just kind of got shaken up, hit his shoulder pretty hard. But, yeah, and I think uh, that foul was on number 21 for Western Boone. That's uh, Riggs Baxter, who I think has kind of had a frustrating night himself. So maybe he took some frustration out on that fast break right there. Well, Solomon looks to be okay. He's up and walking around. 
Salmon is not a not a big guy, so when he hits the floor that hard, it's got to hurt. He's listed here on the roster. Michael Salmon is at 5'11", 165 pounds. And I'm not sure if they're going to check in someone else to shoot these free throws for him. I think that's what they might do just because, you know, he's not – there's no reason to keep him in the game anymore, and it looks like they are going to do that, and I think Alex Sabilla is going to come take his shot. So at the end of the game, you know, we hope Michael Salmon's okay, and he looks just to be shaking up a little bit, but going to maybe put some ice on that shoulder and, and uh, call it a night for him. Very good job tonight. Very impressed by Michael Salmon and the rest of the Eagles. Very nice job by Salmon and Sabia stepping in for the free throws. Three minutes left to go in the game. Zionsville leads now by 23 points. Second free throw is made. Zionsville 24 point lead, 70 to 46. The clock is now under three minutes to go. A nice crossover there by McMahon. T looks and nearly throws it away. Porter with the ball, and Weibo just having a tough time getting quality shots. And it looks like number 45, Josh Dunlap, has checked into their Dunlop, excuse me, has checked into the game as long along with Jake Mann, number 15. Weibo still has possession of the ball, fighting to get a look, and a near air ball, but the rebound is made by Western Boone, and he's fouled, and I believe that's number three, Porter. And, and you've yeah. certainly got to appreciate the enthusiasm by the Western Boone coach, you know, being down 24 points and still, you know, clapping hard, being very enthusiastic for his players off good plays. So very nice job, and Western Boone's going to get to the line for two shots here. A deep breath, and the shot bounces around and is missed. Another substitution now for Zionsville as they're starting to clear their bench. Sabia will check out. Checking into the game is trying to make out the number from here, Alex. Looks like number 20. It's Ben Hudson. He's listed on the junior varsity squad. Okay, there he is. Uh, five. Uh, looks like he's 5'11", 150, pound, or 150 pounds, plays wing, and is only a sophomore as well. So this Zionsville team up and down the roster few seniors and then a lot of sophomores and juniors so I mean very young we were talking before the game between Josh Dunlop 6'7 240 and Derek Smith 6'10 220 they're both sophomores so Zionsville very promising future at least along the front court for them yeah not to mention you know they've got a guard in um, Braden Hall as Josh Dunlop gets a great offensive rebound and puts it back up and gets fouled but, uh, you know, as we were talking about, Braden Hall is only a sophomore. Michael Solomon's going to be coming back for his senior year next year, you know, only a junior. So, you know, obviously replacing Dunchy, Dockich, and Panola will seem to be the hardest, and, jo um, excuse me, and Dalton Judd. But and as we mentioned, they're already replacing this year, Dun uh, as you said, Dunchy. Yeah. And, excuse me, I, I thought John Nomchef played basketball, but I may have been mistaken. We covered him during the high school football season, and, I don't yeah, know a, if he ever did play basketball or not, but I'm sure he'd be a heck of a player. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Missed free throw for Dunlop, and the ball goes out of bounds. Two minutes left to go in the game. Zionsville leads by 23 points, score of 70-47. to 47. And they are going to enjoy an undefeated weekend, which is a great start to this season. Absolutely. You know, last night I don't think they expected – the game to be as close as it maybe was, but nevertheless, coming in tonight after a big overtime win last night, fighting the fatigue of two games in a row, very good job to come in here and dominate this team. Pass to the corner, and a three-point attempt is made by Western Boone. That's Austin Burtner. Uh, he's kind of handled the majority of the scoring in the second half for Western Boone. Burtner has. Sure have. McMahon between... led in the first half. Yeah. Burner's got a lot of open looks and has been a very impressive shooter tonight. I've so. been uh, somewhat surprised with how quiet McMahon's been in the second half. I absolutely agree with you. He kind of dominated the ball in the first half, and I would say he took a, a pretty large percentage of their shots and probably made a large percentage of their yeah. shots as well, but he struggled here in the second half, and that could be attributed to uh, 
Zionsville just maybe making him more of an emphasis. A and rebound looks, and put back by Dunlop, and the student section goes crazy for him. So maybe that's his first two points ever. And on a varsity that, squad. or maybe he's just a really popular kid around school, around campus. But Dunlop gets a standing ovation after he makes his first basket. He's a big kid too, six seven, two forty, and he goes up for a block, but fouls Bertner, and Bertner's going to get two more free throw attempts. 47 seconds left to go in the game. And I would expect Zionsville after these free throws to kind of just dribble the ball out and, and call it a night. So it's been a very, very impressive night for Zionsville handling this this game and the fatigue of last night's victory. And, you know, moving forward, I'm not sure who's next on their schedule, but looking forward to covering them this year. I think they're going to be a good squad. Yeah, we're going to have, as the free throw is missed by Bertner, we're going to have, me and Alex are going to have about eight to ten games this year. And, the rest of the Zionsville games will probably be broadcasted either by Brian Scott or Rob Kendall. But anytime you have us, we will do our best and try to avoid the, the technical issues we had early in the game tonight. And Zionsville is going to probably try to use as much of the clock as possible. Under 40 seconds left in the game. Dribbling it out around the perimeter. And they're just going to let it go, I think. Yeah, Western Boone is going to call the dogs off, and this game is going to end. Western Boone is going to lose tonight at Zionsville by a score of 72-51. to 51. A 21-point win for the Eagles as they remain undefeated on the season. And the leading scorer tonight for the Eagles, Derek Smith. And time will expire. That'll be the end of the game. We're going to sign off here at Zionsville, and we'll see you next time. This was Zionsville Basketball brought to you by AudioSportsOnline.com. Good night.